The MMA Discussion Podcast is brought to you by SportsOfAnarchy.com. Visit our site for all your sporting news and needs. We're also brought to you by SubmissionFC.com. Enter the promo code SportsOfAnarchy10 for 10% off the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gear. We're brought to you now by the Flex Belt. Summer is approaching fast. You want to strengthen and tone those abs. The Flex Belt, FDA cleared, might just be for you. And I need one of these. I'm getting flabby and the summer's approaching. I just totally need one. Follow the link on the description below. Get your very own. And, so, and as well, go to sportsofanarchy.com uh, if you want to know how it works, um, if you want a really good visual telling of, of, of how it, of how it uh, helps you out. Chris Paliuga, our very own, uh, did a great review on the site. If you want to just go on there, search Flex Belt, I'm telling you, it's, it's a great hookup. I definitely am going to uh, invest in it myself. We're available to listen to on iTunes and the radio podcast app Stitcher, which is available on all smartphone devices. If you're ever on the car, you want to hook us up to the radio, do it. And if you want to avoid any uh, storage unit issues on your phone, Stitcher is the way to go. There's great uh, music bands and uh, podcasts on there that you got to listen to. Of course, give us a rating, give us a like, give us a listen. We appreciate you guys on there anyway. Episode 29. I double checked. That's the one we're on. My host uh, is uh, joining us, Chris Pagman. Chris, yo, what's going on, guys? I think it's twenty nine. It might be twenty eight, but I, I think we're on twenty nine. I think we're on twenty nine. We're doing a lot these days, but that's a good problem. We're also brought. Uh, we also have here with us Jonas. Yep, I'm back. What's up, guys? Becoming a mainstay on the on the show. Are you? Becoming, yeah. Yeah, after uh, <laughs> quite a wild weekend, not only in the world of MMA, but of course professional wrestling, which we have to comment on it in just a minute uh, as it pertains to MMA. But uh, let's talk about this first. Uh, we also we want to get this out of the way. Drew Dodder getting the no contest call uh, about three days ago now, um, which is good for a minute. To be honest, it really didn't look like uh, like it was going to be changed to that. Chris, you even admit that. It probably wasn't going to be put on there, uh, or that, that it wasn't going to get overturned and changed. Uh, why did you think that? Uh, it just didn't seem like it. it nothing ever gets done right in MMA. It seems like <laughs> most of the things like this. It seems like they just can't do anything. They can't or won't do anything about this, and they don't want to have to go through all the stipulations and try try to get it overturned and do it right. But it didn't seem like they had to do much in Brazil. It only took twelve hours. They got it done. And I mean, it was the right thing to do. The guy didn't tap, and it was just a, a weird finish. The ref apparently stepped up, said he messed up the call, and they got it done. I'm just glad the guy didn't get a loss on his record. Definitely. And uh, Jonas, I know you and me went back and forth that it, that that was a hard call to to watch, to talk about, uh, especially not knowing if they were going to change it. Um, what are your thoughts on him getting the NC call? Absolutely hard to watch. Um, I think that, and, and you know, you and I have gone back and forth. Oh. I believe that the strings were pulled to convince the CEO of Cab MMA to rain down and convince his people to go ahead and uh, overturn the decision that was rendered. Yeah. Um, simply because uh, if, if a guy from that high up is going to step in um, this soon, because uh, the last I checked, there wasn't going to be a decision made on that particular fight until April the 6th. So uh, a little, well over a week before I thought that was, was going to happen. Uh, in a matter of 12 hours and one day, it goes down. Now, um, <clears throat> well, the reason why I say that is that uh, I saw so many scenarios in which uh, certain entities, I won't name them, could have had some influence. And uh, mentioned that, you know, hey, you know, if you, if you want to treat our fighters this way, uh, we kind of have no reason to come back down to Brazil. I think that had a big part of it. Just just a humble opinion. I think that had a huge part of it. And uh, money talks. So the right decision was made. Yes. Was it influenced in a way that it probably shouldn't have been? That could have, you know, kind of been uh, made to seem as if it was tampering? Sure. Sometimes things like that need to happen. Oh yeah, it's that lesser, definitely it, it, Yeah, it's the lesser of two evils in my mind. So yeah, it definitely absolutely. sounds like a reasonable thing to say. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the UFC decided to say something like that because they really. I mean, Brazil has a lot of big stars over there, but they could just threaten it without even meaning it, and I'm sure the commission will be like, "Oh, okay, 
because they're not like it's not like the Vegas Commission where it's like strict and the commission runs boxing and everything like that. The Brazilian MMA Commission just is a small time thing, and it's, uh, they could just threaten, "All right, you guys don't want to make money, we'll be out of here soon." Yeah, I don't even think that commission would exist without the UFC. I mean, they run other Brazilian promotions out there, like Jungle Fights and 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 Pancrase and Balitudo out there. But let's be real, that's not the big money maker out there for Brazil. And, and I think if, like, say the UFC decided not to go there for, like, two years, you know how much of a big hurting I would do on their wallets? I, you know, it would be bad. And uh, it all, not only uh, along with this call, but the, the, the Brazilian commission has also decided that this referee, um, I forget his name, but I don't even want to say his name, but this referee uh, is going to get a refresher course which I've never heard of, but he, uh, it's supposed to be he, – he, basically he's going to be retrained and being a ref, which is good. He certainly needs that. Um, I certainly think that more refs need to be humble enough to admit when they make a mistake. I don't believe he admitted he made a mistake on his own accord. But, yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. That's, I was just about to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, if I may interrupt, I'm sorry, Nick. But go you, ahead. Yeah. That's just that's the thing. I, didn't, I think I didn't. that that whole uh, because there was no provision in the existing rules until this fight. I think that uh, Eduardo Hardy was basically fed a statement. They made him say that he made a mistake yeah. because again, somebody made the uh, the you know chief operating officer of Cab MMA to come down on them. So if that guy is getting his arm twisted. That guy's twisting everybody else's arms to do what, what needed to happen. So I don't believe for a second that Eduardo Hardy, uh, his own volition to say that he made a mistake because he had five days to do that. He had Saturday. He had Sunday. He had Monday. He had Tuesday. He had Wednesday. Thursday, all of a sudden, he's talking. He says he made a mistake. Something's fishy. I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely. And uh... Yeah, no, that's definitely a valid point to make. And um, I heard, like, what seemed a little fishy is they were, everyone was showing pictures of the ref training with, um, I forget what the guy's name is, the guy who actually won the fight. So, it was really too, but nothing really Leandro came up Silva. about that. Leandro Silva is the, uh, the guy that uh, lost the one fight in this decision, so yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, I got to say this. Um, after doing some, some research on it, that's a, that actually isn't Leandro Silva. That's a guy named Leandro Silva, but it's not the fighter that fought yeah, on. Same guy. Honestly, it didn't look like the same guy. Yeah, no, it's not him. It's been confirmed that that wasn't him. So, I mean, that whole thing with him training with the the ref was uh, was actually not true. So, uh, okay, then scratch that from the yeah, scratch that from all existence. Even when I looked at the picture, it didn't look like him. Yeah, it and it doesn't like matter him. anyway. It's just, it's still no matter what how sure. you look at it, that was just a horrible call, and uh, I'm glad that for once, you know, a horrible call is justifiably overturned. Uh, the way that it's neat, that I, you know, it, there are so many bad calls and 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 uh throughout the history of MMA that some of them just kind of stick and they're bad. Like the like I, I was brought to attention to some bad ones, but that but I can't compare them to how bad that one was. I mean, that's right. really I mean, not at fault for the fighter at all. First, Drew Daubert didn't deserve to lose that fight. Silva didn't deserve to win that fight. And what bugs me about Silva is he actually is, is like, bummed about having it changed to a no contest. He's like, I don't think that it should be changed. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, sure. Just shush. Hush. Just no. You can't be saying you won that fight. You didn't win that fight. You can't. I mean, his his main arguing point is, oh, yeah, he went limp on me. But how do you know he wasn't just relaxing? He was in a certain spot where you were holding his neck down. Why not? Why not just relax and be like, okay, I'm in a dominant position now. I'm not going to get tapped. I'm fine. I'll just take a breather, your muscles relax. Of course, that's going to feel like a guy's going limp on you, but he knows he's full of shit. And, um, so I'm glad that I got overturned. And, uh, again, yeah. also congratulations to Drew Dauber. He's getting another fight already. He's going to fight Efrain Escudero at UFC 188 in Mexico City. Um, good fight right there. I like that fight. And, uh, Ef uh Efrain needs a fight. And, uh, I've actually been excited seeing, seeing how his improvements over at, uh, what is it, the MMA lab? Yeah, with uh, John Crouch and Benson Henderson and them guys. And uh, good thing that Drew Dauber gets another chance to really just kind of uh, fix that from history books at this point and just get another fight in uh, quick right off the bat. Speaking of UFC 188, another fight 
Uh, our last podcast, we had UFC lightweight Johnny Case on the podcast. Uh, we want to say thank you again for him coming on. That was an awesome interview. Uh, he gets his wish. He's going to be fighting um, – who's that guy he called out? Who did he want? Frankie uh, – Francisco Trevino. Francisco Trevino. He's going to be – he's going to get his wish. He called for that fight. He asked for it, and he got his wish. Uh, he's going to fight him at UFC 188. That's a fight to watch, man. Um, yeah, we definitely wish him the best of luck over here. Uh, definitely. Um, Absolutely. UFC 188 is starting to pile on. I'm actually also eager uh, when it gets near the three-month target when they're going to start stacking up UFC 189. And uh, that tour is getting very interesting. There's a lot yeah, of... That's, have you guys been watching the Embedded for that? Yeah. There's been a lot of... Well, I have. I don't know if Jonas has. Have you? No, I haven't seen much of it. Yeah. There's I a, do know the it, it, it kind of funny. Oh, yeah. It's hilarious. Connor's being the whole wily self that he is. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, my I, favorite I, thing that he did was when Jose Aldo was doing a photo shoot thing and he asked this lady to hold his belt and then Connor found her and then say, hey, let me see the belt. And then he went to the door that he that had like a window on it and he went to it and he was holding Aldo's belt at the window. And he's like, come get it. Come get it. Come get it. <laughs> Yo, he's been going after him on interviews oh, shit, like all yeah. over TV on Fox. He's been going at him. And then I saw um, when they did that face-off in Boston, I think it was, that Dana was separating them and holding Connor back, and Connor like arm dragged him. Yeah, I was pretty. Uh, it's, it's getting pretty heated. And Connor knows what's up. I believe he's selling the shit out of this fight. He's doing a great job doing it. Oh really. yeah. yeah, but I also think I feel like Connor's getting his head a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna maybe be a good thing or a bad thing for Jose, but. He's getting angry, so I don't know yeah. how that how that will affect the fight. We'll see. I mean, shit. When Aldo, when he looks angry and he's fighting angry, doesn't seem like technique is totally thrown out the window. And as a matter of fact, it makes him seem like he's a more dangerous fighter. Um, I think the Chad Mendez fight is a, is a perfect example of a very aggressive uh, forward yeah, coming. But I, I don't think Aldo. anyone's gotten them this angry ever before. Oh, uh, it's gonna be awesome. I think. I, personally, I think. Uh, I think Aldo wins. I think I believe Jonas has the same uh, opinion as me that uh, that uh, Aldo probably wrecks Connor here. Now, I personally think Connor is a really great fighter. Um, I, I was explaining to Jonas in, a, in another conversation at one point that Connor actually has this very, very beautiful striking style. He's got this very oh, rare yeah. one that you rarely ever see in MMA, in which it's it was actually used a lot of, uh, a lot in in old school boxing, like in the seventies, eighties, even probably earlier, um, called shifting. And it's very, it's very strange because of his stance and because of how long his reach is that he's able to utilize it as good as he is, especially with his counter striking. Um, so I believe he's one of the better strikers in that division. I think overall, though, Aldo's striking is actually going to be too much for him. I think there are some weak points in Connor's, uh, not only his stance, but in that style that Aldo will be able to really capitalize and take advantage on. And uh, I think that Aldo probably wins that in the second round. Uh, that's my opinion. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't that's, actually know yours. What's yours, Chris? The stance is very similar to like a point fighting, like karate, taekwondo kind of stance. Kind of, but the reason he does that actually is because he wants to be able to, uh, you know, have what's what's called flex footing, which when you're backing up really fast, but at the same time you have you're, you're so light on your feet, like if you throw a kick, you, you'd be able, you'd be actually, you'd actually be able to have uh, good balance. balance and, uh, yeah. yeah, and actually, yeah, and you're right, kickboxers and taekwondo guys use that a lot, but it's not what I would call a taekwondo stance because kickboxers and, and kickboxing use it in the. Yeah. When they're tall and they're actually able to utilize, it. especially if they want to level up, level down to their opponent, which I, I think, think yeah, Connor I'm not is going to break guy. down the whole Connor Aldo fight, but I, I'm definitely I want to see Connor come out with the win just because I think it'll be so much more fun for the division. But even if Aldo loses, it's going to make him a bigger star. I mean, if Aldo wins, it's going to make him a bigger star just fighting Connor. And um, yeah. I don't know, I can see it playing out in a lot of different ways. Jonas, your last thoughts on this one? Yeah, you know, um, I, I think that Aldo striking is just, as we both said, it's too much for Connor. Uh, Connor's not a bad fighter at all. Um, Connor has basically gotten where he is based on his ability to market himself. And there's, I mean, is there something wrong with that? Not really. When and you look at and the big picture, um, if you look at the business, yeah, and he, yeah, he knocked some people out. I don't know if he's knocking anybody out worth knocking out to get a title shot, but he's knocking people out. I mean, 
You know? Yeah, I mean, he could have not. He could. They could. He could have took out one more guy, but. People act like Poirier is not a big enough name. Poirier was a pretty good up there guy. I don't think he was sure. a big enough name to win a, a title shot. And uh, maybe that, not, but there's obvious reasons why he's getting it. And I yeah. think well, it's it's so it's the timing of it all. I mean, to put it on the biggest, uh, to put it on historically the be- the biggest card of the UFC's year, which is of course in July Fourth card. Um, historically, has always been the biggest thing to do, and it makes sense putting it with International Fight Week. Um, him being such a sellable fighter. Um, Aside from the fact that um, it's going to sell very well, if Conor wins, it's huge for the UFC, and if he loses, Aldo gets more marketability, and it can pop. So we make him to a much bigger star. That's what, that's a, that's certainly a silver right lining. Yeah, that's certainly a silver lining for me that I've always thought. Okay, Aldo really benefits more so uh, out of this. I think more than anybody. Connor's always going to be a sellable fighter. Connor also happens to know this is the biggest fight of his career, and he wants as many eyes on it as he can possibly get. And I believe that there certainly will be more so in this fight than any fight he's ever going to have. I think I don't think that there will um, be a, a fight like this as big as this in his career uh, for a while, at least not until somebody else comes in the reins. Um, that, Unless he wins and he decides to move up the lightweight as possible. Oh, definitely. Actually. Yeah, that's right. I don't see that happening, but you know, that, that's a possibility. We'd see if that, that, that could happen. I, I'd be very uh, surprised if it did. Um, like I say, yeah, I think Connor is always going to remain at the, at the top of that division, at least in the top five. Um, you know, and certainly, you know, at first I was bummed that he got it over Frankie, but now we're getting Frankie Faber, so I can't complain anymore. So, because that's another great fight for the fans that we all get to watch, and that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun that's gonna be a fun one. And uh, I personally can't wait for that. That's gonna be. Yeah. I think that's one of the ones I'm looking most forward to this year next to that fight as well as of course Johnson Jones there's a lot of great fights coming in this spring yeah. season I love it I'm just now uh, moving on to the next topic I'm not sure if we we're going to discuss this but I got to bring it up Go ahead. um I really just hope 187 and 189 stay intact they they said said okay DJ okay <laughs> DJ Dillashaw just got injured yeah oh. he's out yeah. of the main event of UFC 186 against Henry Burrell <laughs> I think we should definitely talk about that. Uh, oh, well, the injury, yeah. Uh, TJ got a busted rib, but it should only keep him out for five weeks, according to the doctor. So that's not too bad. He he could end up being uh, fighting at 190. I wouldn't be surprised actually putting him in uh, putting him in Brazil with Henan Burrell, maybe the co-main. Um, that but makes you think sense. They're gonna want to push it back that far till August. Uh, I don't know. I mean, let's see, five weeks from now. Uh, that's what May. May like the first week of May. Yeah, well, I mean, wh- what other card could you add it to? I mean, it's not like you could you could put it to 189. I mean, maybe 188, but I don't see why they would put it in Brazil. There's real not there's not a very marketable angle in putting it in Mexico City. So yeah, I think they probably would Wait, push Mexico, it all the way. Mexico, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I think they would. I think actually, I think that makes the best sense to put Henan back in back in Brazil. Uh, make that. I mean, it'd make for a great second fight, especially if you won. Um, I don't think that he will, but yeah, I think they push it all the way back at least to to one ninety. Um, have they said if they're gonna have a replacement for Barat? Nah. Uh, what is it? He, oh, they they offered Barau. Uh, oh, this is according to Dana. Uh, they offered Barau uh, another matchup, and they said no. They'll wait for the title, and and Dana said, all right, that's cool. Did they ever mention against who it was? No, they didn't, he didn't say who he offered him right. or anybody. So, it would have been mean, interesting. I really yeah. would actually would have liked Obviously, to, see, you know. What's the matter? I didn't hear you. Sorry. I would have liked to have seen who they would have pitted him up against. I, me oh, personally, yeah. it would have been cool to see him fight Brian Caraway. Yeah. For for obvious yeah, reasons. For obvious reasons, that's why I would have liked to see that. But I yeah. think that goes back to one ninety. Uh, that would be one of the few times I'd be rooting for Henry Burrell there. Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. but, but yeah, as we were saying, uh, obviously this card wasn't the strongest card despite having two title fights on it. I think it's pretty. I think it's strong it, enough. You know, I think it, it's not well, like it, it was. I mean, it's not. A, I'm not saying it's a bad card, but yeah. it, for having two title fights on it, that those are usually really big cards. Yeah. And in comparison, it was probably the weakest card with two title fights on it, or one of them. 
Yeah, I think it'll do all right. I mean, you got guys like Quentin Jackson on there, Michael Bisping. Um, yeah, but it's still not like a. It's nothing. Spe- it's nothing too special. I mean, I'll say that. DJ but... versus for, for Gucci. I expect that to be a, a pretty good blowout for uh, DJ. Uh, Rampage versus Maldonado. I mean, yeah, that's it's not. That's not a pay per view co main event. It's. A, I mean, Rampage is a big name, but that's not a co main event of pay per view. Bisping versus Dalloway. That could turn out to be. All right, but also, I mean, I it's not a lot of the cards on the a lot of the fights on the main card aren't really like pay per view caliber fights. No, uh, I, I, I guess it's a depends on who, who you ask, but yeah, I guess. I mean, take... if you if this card was on a Fox card, I wouldn't be. I would. It would look. It looks like a Fox card. Uh, I guess to each his own. I, I I'll, I'm certainly think that I'll enjoy it. And uh, man, if if for Gucci, I mean, Dimitri. Chris Johnson was the king of Fox there about him and Benson Henderson, and then you have fights. Yeah, certainly. With that aren't the greatest, but they have some name value. So yeah, I think it does look like the Fox card. Yeah, that's true. There are some, like you know Rampage, Bisping. Those are always name value guys. You got got you know you got people interested in seeing Rampage come back. You got Britain fans always wanting to watch Bisping get in there. So I, yeah, I mean they're they're relative fights like they're they're relative fights for the. Yeah, they're relative fights for closer to the bottom of their divisions, but they're not like fights where the co-main event is a, a title eliminator or something like that. So, I mean, it's not a it's not a bad card by any means. There's good fights on there, and it's worth watching if you're a fan. But, I mean, it doesn't compare to any of the cards coming up. Hmm. Be that way, then. Uh. <laughs> if you compare UFC 186 to 187, 188, no, I mean there's no comparison. Especially but... 187 and 189 because they both have, have two title fights on there. Yeah, what well, 189 is to be determined um, because they only no, have guys, those two um, fights. The, those but, are 189 have uh, Connor versus Aldo and uh, Robbie and Rory, but those are the only fights on there right now. Yeah. There's no other fights added to that card, so I mean that's to be determined. 187 yeah, is un- has incomparable. Two very good title fights on there so i'm already ha- pretty happy with that yeah who wouldn't be you know but as far as um yeah you know 187 i, I think it's incomparable to any card uh right now and it, it, it you know it, it, that's why i am interested in seeing like what fights they do add to 189 they haven't added anything and i want to know what they will add i can't wait until i mean i'm pretty sure comes I, they're not gonna leave that card with like not that great of if they can stack uh, it up like, the way that they have with 187 uh, that would be a great no I, I think they're gonna do it like that because well, I yeah, hope that's yeah. one of their biggest cards of the whole year if not their biggest so I mean I'm not gonna be surprised if they do stack that to the deck and I'll be happy about it I mean 186 is <gasps> not the most appealing card to me even with the TJ Burrell fight I mean I, I'll watch it but I mean mm-hmm. when I look at 187 and 189 those two title fights on each of those cards compared to when this card had two title fights, not even close. I will definitely. I, I, I was excited, of course, more so for uh, TJ and Demetrius Johnson. I always wa- love watching that guy fight. He's doing – he does he does uh, great things every single fight. It, it is unfortunate. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's just, it doesn't have an ang- – the, the problem with each of his fights is it, it doesn't have an angle in which – um, you, you really believe that the challenger, at least lately, that the challenger will, you know, put up a fight. That's the thing, and that's yeah. unfortunate. And but at the same time, it's I a, agree. It, it's a, <laughs> it's a feeling that no one gets. Like when TJ's gonna fight Burrell, there is a possibility Burrell could come in there, a totally different fighter from the first one, and and, and beat TJ. In which that'd be a crazy moment to watch. Uh, with Johnson Jones, for obvious reasons, that's an amazing fight. Crit- Weidman Vitor, another one for obvious reasons, that's an amazing fight that people got to see. Conor Aldo, of course. Robbie Rory, a rematch that people definitely want to see. Um, you know, the, the Johnson Corey Gucci just doesn't have that. And, I, and it's unfortunate because just I, I believe they're giving Horiguchi too soon. But uh, again, I, th- I believe that that division was traffic jam the second John Lineker decided to beat a number uh, another contender, and, and 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 then just you know jump ship to the division upwards because he couldn't stop eating donuts. It's totally yeah. unfair <laughs> to the division. I really it, it really ma- I really loathe Lineker for that move. I really like dislike him as a fighter because of that. It really bums me out that um that he that he pulled that stunt so many times allowed himself to be ranked so highly and then kind of just starts that division with the with with what he's done to it that essentially it bugs the crap out of me and so uh, i i hope that bantamweight he gets uh, molly at this point i really <laughs> yeah i mean 
with them. DJ, we haven't really seen him be in any trouble since the John Dotson fight, really. Yeah. So, I mean, for, I, I'd i be looking forward just if we had someone come in there, we can give him a challenge. Like, we have, um, even with Burrell, when he was dominating people, beating them, finishing them all, and then we have Dillashaw come in there, and even though he dominated him, he did it in a way that was exciting to watch, and it was, like, unbelievable because his contender that was such an underdog definitely came in there and just destroyed him with terrific technique and just... It was beautiful, and even though DJ has such great technique, he's never like it's never anything that you don't expect from him. You expect him to beat these guys, and you expect him to not have too much difficulty doing it. With the Dodson fight, we saw him get dropped multiple times. You know, they're like, "Oh, he's in danger. We gotta." It's like exciting. Yeah, and Dodson's coming back from injury. He will be on that 187 card against Zach Makovsky, and that's certainly a fight to watch. Um, Especially if Dodson can get another knockout or win, he'll probably get that rematch. Um, which you know, I, I would be instead. That. that would easily be the next exciting fight at flyweight. Dodson's one of the most exciting, uh, most marketable fighters at 125. Um, so certainly that rematch would do good, and it would definitely give Demetrius another fine paycheck. But I, I think DJ's getting these these uh <laughs> these paychecks nicely, being in the headliner. You know. Um, I don't know if you get paid more or less for being in the co-main or main, but I would think that it certainly helps him each time because this is the second time because of an injury that he's gotten a main event slot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't believe it does affect their pay grade because they get paid a certain amount mm -hmm. based on their win. So he's not getting pay-per-view points for that, but when he does do a pay-per-view – they, in their contract, if they do have pay-per-view points, it's in there how much of a percentage they make off of it. So it's not really going to change if he's in the headliner or if he's in the bottom of the pay-per-view. So that's not really going to affect anything, but he's still bringing home a good amount of money regardless. I hear you. All right. We also so had a great weekend uh, in fights. Friday and Saturday, Bellator 135 and World Series of Fighting 19. Um, yeah, definitely. Let's get to those. Some good, some good fights, man. First of all, Ryan Couture, the son of obvious legend uh, Randy the Natural Couture, coming in and uh, took on Dakota Cochran and got busy. Immediately uh, took it to the ground, got the back cinch. Uh, what I think that's his third rear naked choke submission victory in a row since um, since being cut by the UFC. Um, Impressive performance. I actually asked him soon after that fight to come out of the podcast, and, and, and uh, fingers crossed, hopefully we'll get him on. Um, I, I think I think he's finding a nice home in Bellator. Uh, he certainly uh, looks impressive. He's able to hang with these lightweights, and uh, I don't know. We'll see how he does. I think uh, if he gets one or two more good fight uh, performances like that, he's he's looking at a chance at Will Brooks at that title at least. Yeah. Whoever holds it at, at mean, that point in time. Yeah, definitely. Jonas, did you watch these fights? Title. Did you say? I'd like to see him. Did you see him? You did see them, right? Yeah. What did you think of Ryan Couture's performance? I thought that was awesome, and I'd love to see him fight Michael Chandler before he gets anywhere else. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good one. That would be a good one. Michael Chandler has a fight coming up, but if he wins that and then hit him and Couture, yeah, he has a fight coming up. I believe one thirty-seven or thirty-eight. Yeah, uh, he's fighting on the. Yeah, it it's should be a little pretty coming up. It's the one with uh, Simba. He's right on Shamrock and uh, Simba oh, Spice. That's right. The <laughs> um, him and uh, who is he fighting? Yeah. Who's he fighting? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Derek Campos. Oh, uh, okay. I've seen him. Oh. Is that who it is? Derek Campos, maybe. Yeah. Oh, oh. Let me yeah. see if you can't confirm. Yeah. It. Yeah. Go on a book that one then. Ryan Butcher and Michael. Chandler. If Chandler gets the win, certainly put them together. I would love to see it. Um, yes, sir. I'm pretty sure it's Derek Campos. That yeah, Michael Chandler is fighting Derek Campos. Bellator 138. 38. Yeah, Simba Spice versus the uh, Mr. Shamrock. Uh, I, man, I, I'm actually um, going to be going on to another podcast soon, and they, they, I know that they're going to ask me about that fight. 
because one of the one of the guys running that podcast is, is a huge fan of Kimbo, and uh, he says he's going to ask me about it, and I told him he's probably not going to like what I'm going to say about it, um, only because, you know, it's just such an awkward fight to me. You know, it's a fight no one asked for, no one expected, but it's so odd that everybody just knows that people are going to watch it. It's so weird, right? It's just one of those taboo things that, hey, why not watch that? You know, it's it's. Dude, I mean, that has all the marketability in the world at this point, even though they're old as shit. Yeah. I mean, it's so weird. It's just one of those things where you know you'll watch it. Yeah. And they were supposed to fight each other at Elite XC back in the day, and seven I mean, years ago, both huge names in the sport. So, regardless of anything, that that's going to do views. It is, but man, it's just... That, uh, that's strictly for the casuals out there. And hey, you know, you got to take care of the casuals, too. They, they uh, invest. It's, it's all the same money. So, you know, it's all the same ratings, no matter who watches it. So, yeah, I, I say go ahead, ahead. You know, fluff it up for the casuals. Much love to them. Make it happen. <laughs> it's all good. Fluff it up. <laughs> fluff it. Yeah, and that's on, that's on Spike TV, home of the not-so-bright most of the Times. Oh. <laughs> Talking more <laughs> shit, are you? All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. See, I was trying to be nice about it, man. I it was fun. <laughs> they, they, play, they play. They play cops on there. Their lead into Bellator is usually cop. Oh. Mm -hmm. so that tells you the type of people. <laughs> 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 Awesome. I mean, no, I watch, I watch Spike I, TV. I get, I get down with some Spike TV every once in a while, but I'm not on there watching cops. I'm on there watching Bellator and maybe some Bar Rescue, but that's it. Yeah, I, I watch Bar Rescue. I, of course, watch Glory, and then um, Bellator made the yeah. smart move of getting Glory and boxing. Bellator and Bar Rescue. That's what I'm there for. I'm not watching cop. What I do like that Bell, the, the, not Bellator, Bellator. What I do like that Spike happy. TV. I know, but I'm not there watching cops getting all happy when I see oh shit, Kimbo and Shamrock are fighting. <laughs> yeah. What I what I do like uh, that Spike TV has done is they've now incorporated a, a premier championship boxing onto their uh, their program, which uh, is great. Now they're gonna put boxing on there, so now you get the trifecta: you get boxing, kickboxing, and MMA on that channel. Um, so I'm I'm sure that the popularity has gone up in there. Um, so good for them. I mean, it certainly works out. Sure. Let me ask you this. Was there talk of Joe Schilling wanting to do uh, Premier Championship Boxing as well? He wanted to be Spike's first. Uh, I, I don't know about that, that, but if but I, yeah, I wouldn't I doubt it, that bad motherfucker. He was talking about it on Rogan. Really? Yeah, he said he wanted to be Spike's first uh, triple sport athlete. So he, he, uh, he said that once the uh, news of PCV coming to Spike, so... Joe, I don't know. Sh Joe Schilling is a bad motherfucker, man. That was about a month ago. That's a whole different game. <laughs> that dude, yeah, man. Right. He makes everybody. Yeah, I mean, um, uh. yeah, uh, going back to the Ryan Couture fight, I mean, that fight, I didn't really expect anything else out of that. I mean, Dakota Cochran's okay, but I expected Ryan to get the win. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, I expected a better fight. Win, so. I certainly expected a better fight from Cochran. He's pulled some upsets in his in his career, and uh, you never knew. You, you really don't know with him. Uh, so, but yeah, you know, but of I course, Ryan. Really yeah, Ryan okay. getting it done, and that was a great performance. And mm -hmm. Ryan Couture, if you're listening, we would love to have you on. Um, we'll move on to the next one. What was it? Francis Carma taking on Guillaume, Guillaume, Guillaume uh, Viana, uh, yeah. Brazilian light heavyweight um, Bell, uh, Bellator fighter. Karma they basically did what we expected him to, and uh, it's surprising. He did it at 205. He's moving a division up. Maybe that's the healthier way for him to go, being as big as he is. Uh, he was always referred to as a huge middleweight. Um, maybe he's just, uh, you know, tone out and keep the keep the diet to a minimum. And I think, you know, that's probably a smart move. Uh, yeah. I mean, what, I didn't have a chance to catch this card live, and I went back and watched most of the fights on the main card, but... I asked Nick before coming on, I'm like, should I watch the Carmont? I'm going to talk about it much. He tells me, he, I'm like, what happened in the fight? Did anything good happen? And he's like, and I basically GSP'd him. I'm like, oh, so I'm definitely going to watch that. <laughs> yeah. Viana had a good round. Uh, I believe he won one round. But uh, Francis Carmont basically I did what Francis Carmont does. That. And that's, uh, you know, put a guy on his back, get on top, make it a fight, make it his fight, control it. So it was very good performance on Francis' part. Um, but I'm still not watching. You're still not watching. Uh, all right. 
Well, I, if I watched it, I thought it was fantastic. Well, it. Yeah. Well, it was, he's, we're trying to get him to come on the podcast. I know. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with Francis? We, we'll kick him <laughs> off. And, <laughs> I know. Francis, if you're listening, we'll kick him off. He doesn't have to be here. He's... He's expendable. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I personally, Francis, if you're listening, personally, it was uh, a great fight. I would watch opinion. your fight if you come on the podcast. Yeah. By the way, you heard him say, you didn't, I didn't tell him not to watch it. I told you, I actually no, did he tell did. you. Like, he told me. I'll show you. All right. I said, yeah. I said what? I said that. I said he be, basically GSP him. No, he told me. He said, don't watch it. I didn't say don't that. Oh, now you're just throwing oh, shit man. in my mouth. Who comes out? I don't know what I didn't say that. Now you're being now you're now no, you're, he didn't, he you're, actually, you're a liar, fib, or faker right now. I am. I'm definitely not telling the truth. And, see, <laughs> 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 oh man, I'm telling you, Francis Carmona. It was a great performance. Not even that to him. I, I watched it. It was a great performance. It was a great fight by Vienna as well. Um, and I think Carmona does good at 205 with the lack of. Uh, competition in the upper weight classes, I think, you know, bringing in some guys like Karma actually makes sense because uh, they can fill out that division. Not only that, I feel like these guys really uh, have a chance to refresh their careers in these heavier weight classes that are very shallow right now. Um, and so I think uh, Karma could find could potentially find a good home uh, here at uh, 205 uh, in Bellator. With that being said, we'll move on to the co-main event of the night: L.C. Davis versus uh, Hideo Takoro. I believe is. Did I say that right? Yeah. Hideo yeah, Takoro. Yeah. Um, I that was a great fight too. That was really one of the funner fights of the night uh, for me. L.C. Davis looking legit uh, as as he always has. Um, what was it? I know you just recently watched it, uh, Chris. What did you think of that fight? Yeah, I mean it was fun. I mean we saw L.C. Davis look strong in the first two rounds. Um, uh, Takoro was going for a bunch of submissions off his back. He was definitely really active, but on the feet, uh, Davis would look like he was getting the better of him. Takoro was going, like, if you know MMA and you see this guy, like, he gets knocked down. He's sweeping for, like, just looking for the leg, looking for a heel hook, knee bar, whatever the hell he's looking for. And he, he was active. I mean, that's a fun fight to watch. When a guy gets knocked on their back and they're active, or if they're just getting taken down and they're active off their back, that's always fun to watch, especially me because I play guard. So, I mean, I understand. But it's definitely – it's really, it was really fun to watch. Um, Takoro even came back, looked pretty good in that third round, controlled most of it, and almost got tapped there at the end by a pretty tight guillotine. So, I mean, it was just – it was a really fun fight, and I thought uh, the right man won. Oh, definitely. Jonas, who do you have it going into that last uh, – going into the scorecards? Um, I agreed with the judges. Um, yeah, me too. The majority, that is. Uh, I, re- I agree with the majority of the judges. Uh, and, you know, it was a great fight. Uh, Takaro just had no quit in him whatsoever, which was awesome to see. And uh, L.C. Davis also took a nasty up kick. Oh, yeah. Uh, which was oh, legal. Yeah. It was completely legal. That was and legal. That was legal, son. Was, that's what I said. Completely legal. Completely legal. It wasn't even questionable in my eyes. I mean, um, it's it's kind of the eye test there. Maybe he, like, I don't know. He was getting his knee down. It was close, but it was legal on the replay. But, I mean, that's fractions of a second. I don't know. Yeah, I right. saw it. I felt like his knee that's was right up there. Yeah. The ref did see it. Uh, he saw it after, I guess, you know, taking it over when they broke him up or whatnot. But uh, I remember the ref talking to, uh, to Carl and saying, hey, you know, it, it was legal. Uh or you saw him Davis say, "Yeah, it was legal. It was on his, his knee was on the way down, so it's all good." Uh, I this um was yeah I got I had the the right man winning it at the end of the night. I was talking to some uh, fight fans and they were telling me that they thought Takora won, and I was like, I, I didn't see a sing I didn't see a secondary round where he 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 won. So, but it was certainly a competitive fight. I could see why it was close. Um, but yeah, at the end of the night, I had LC Davis winning it. Move on to the main event. That main event. Wow. Title change of hand, Joel Warren versus Marcus Galboa. That was uh wow, what a what a knee yeah. bar submission uh, in the second round. I um, personally, I've actually been in a knee bar that injured me, and uh, let me tell you what, knee bars suck so bad. And uh, but I also say this, that was a valid submission. Joe Warren can say that it wasn't, but that was. I think that that yeah, was. No, once you scream, it's a tap. 
verbal tap. Yeah. yeah, they tell you that in the back. They tell you. They sit you down. They're like, okay, yeah. if you get ah, if you scream loud, if you're if it sounds like you're about to like lose some ligaments or something, I'm gonna stop it. You know, and dude, uh, you could be a tough dude, but I mean, yeah, you, you might not want to. You might want to keep fighting, but if you scream like that, you're done. Yeah, it's exactly. Really Especially yeah, because really instead of you know, if your reaction is to scream instead yeah, of oh wait wait wait, about that tough, about that tough. There's a reason why they scream. So yeah, if they're screaming, yeah. the fight needs to end. Yeah, knee bars are one of the worst. And uh, secondly, I thought recently that uh, Joe Warren uh, sent out a tweet to John McCarthy, basically saying that you know it was uh, you did the right thing after rewatching it. Joe, listen, dude, you did, you were you were there. <laughs> that was your leg in that knee bar. That was your mouth that yelled and screamed. You know why you screamed. You didn't have to rewatch anything to see that. So, yeah, but once on. you get the adrenaline pumping, sometimes you just go into the zone so much that you don't even know what's going on. There, there are times. Yeah, yeah, a lot of guys go into autopilot. It's happened to me once. Yeah, and, um, I've seen it. And a uh, funny thing is that I was just recently having a discussion with one of my buddies who I train with about knee bars. He's just like. Knee bars don't exist. Just go for the heel hook. Knee bars are like he just hate. He despises knee bars. <laughs> I, like hey, I do bars too, but real. for certain they other reasons. Exist. Just go for the heel hook. Whenever you get the knee bar, just set it up for the heel hook. Short story. I I did a jujitsu tournament in 2012, and uh, like in spring of 2012, and um. Man, I, I had made it to the finals. I was a blue belt at the time, and I, it was a blue belt uh, portion of this tournament. It was all blue belts, me and this other guy. And um, we make it to the finals, and about 10 minutes in, he finally gets me to the uh, – almost 10 minutes in. He gets me to the ground. We scramble a lot, and uh, there's a part where he's able to get me in a, a – like a, I go – like well, before this, actually, around the six-minute mark, I took him down, and uh, his hip landed – on my hand and fractured my hand right then and there. <laughs> and then about three minutes later, he finds himself in the knee bar position and he just, bah, just brought back on that sucker. Like he was, like he was the Ronda Rousey of knee bars. It was so bad. I was in crutches for two weeks after that. Knee bars suck. I hate them. Ever since then, I've always said it. I've ne I'll never get put in one of those again. Cause they suck. They're painful. They're, they're worse than arm bars in my opinion. Um, no, there's never been a single arm bar I've ever been put in that hurt as much as that one did, uh, that knee bar, you know. And uh, Jonas was telling, he had like a good, re uh, like a, an, an anatomical reason for why uh, you, you said, can you say it again? Is he on? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, bigger joints, man. Um, yeah. yeah. If you think about it, you know, yeah, bigger joints, bigger ligaments, uh, they're harder to tear, but at the same time, if you got bigger ligaments, you got more material to tear. So, ouch! <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know, a broken thing. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. No, keep going. No, you can uh, break a finger. Yeah, that hurts. You know, try breaking a leg. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And think about all. Yeah. It's so bad, man. Probably I hated it. That, yeah, that, like, that, we saw. We saw Galval when he like. He had it, and then he torqued on it, and then you saw Warren scream. Yeah, that's what, like he didn't realize how bad uh, the positioning he was in. He didn't realize that he was in such a bad position until Gavo decided to just crank the shit out of it. Right, yeah. And he torqued that thing, and it was that was it. It was a wrap. Yeah. Props to the new bantamweight Bellator champion, um, Marcus Gavo. Can't wait to see him again. I mean, if he fights a... Uh, 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 soon, I would love to watch him fight. That a guy with skills like that, always fun to watch. Yeah, there was another card this weekend, World Series of Fighting 19, that had a lot of controversy surrounding it. Um, first let's off, go. should we start with that Teddy Holder? That, let, yeah, oh actually, let's. Woo! What a Man. what a what a rocky that, story right there. Actually, honestly, uh, that's really what it is. The story. Yeah, I mean, okay, so the, the this is the gist <laughs> of it is this: Matt Hamill, you know. He gets the fight in a matter of hours. Hours. Yeah, we gotta. We definitely gotta explain how this fight came to fruition, though. Yeah, Matt Hamill um, made weight. He made weight. Comes in. This the fight with Silva still on. The next morning, fight morning, Saturday morning, he goes to freaking IHOP and got a supposed food sickness. Something. He wasn't able to compete. 
So in a matter of about like 12 hours, if that, less than that probably, uh, they asked Teddy Holder to come out from the prelims and take on Thiago Silva in a light heavyweight title eliminator um, that would put him against the winner of Ronnie Marks and uh, World Series of Fighting middleweight champ David Branch, who also stepped up to, uh, to compete in this tournament. He's going to try and uh, attempt to become a bi champion. But Teddy Holder gets this opportunity of a lifetime to take on Thiago Silva in the cold main event of, of, uh, of World Series of Fighting and goes in there and absolutely puts the thwapping on Thiago Silva in the first round. Um, and he just basically stood toe to toe with the guy. Um, and that, and you know, historically, that's never been smart with Tiago, but he did it. Yeah. And he ate his shots, but hung in there, and then put Tiago down. And once he had him down, he uh, unloaded on him. And of course, now he's one side. He's uh, one fight away from becoming the inaugural World Series of Fighting light heavyweight champion. That's pretty crazy. Dude, <laughs> this guy Teddy Holder just went in there. It wasn't the most technical thing ever. We'll say that. We'll definitely all. Yeah, he stood toe to toe with them, essentially. He just banged. Yeah, no, this dude just walked. He was just walking Tiago Silva down. Tiago Silva was throwing some nasty leg kicks. He just ate them, kept moving forward. He was throwing some punches. He even dropped Holder real quick for a second and looked like he was going to have an easy night work for him. But this dude was just walking forward, throwing some bombs. Like he was leaving his chin out there. He was getting hit. He was just kept moving forward, throwing some short hooks. And eventually he caught Tiago go with a big punch, dropped him, and then just went after him. And this dude was throwing bombs, this hairy ass dude. He was just in there. <laughs> he was just straight up dude, this guy looked like a this guy looked like a teddy bear, but he was just <laughs> He had some heavy ass hands. This dude had some heavy hands and just I mean he put it to him, he and props to him. I mean that was a Great performance by him, and I'm um, looking forward to seeing him in his next fight. God, so that am I. He was caveman on him, bro. That's what happened. He went straight up caveman. <laughs> Neanderthal called him. Yeah. <laughs> Man, what a what a what a timely story for him, and now he's got the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, and uh, man, he has he legit has an opportunity in his second fight at World Series of Fighting to win a a, a title, which he wasn't he wasn't even a thought. Uh, not hours ago, going into that fight of of ever winning a belt. Now he has Yo, the what's opportunity. What's that dude's to, record? What is his record? I know they said it, but well, I can't remember. I'll look it up. Uh, um, but again, what a what a what a story. I mean, what a, a what a upset. And that's just again, I've been saying it for nine and one. He's nine and one. Wow. Oh. He lost his second fight via first round armbar. He's finished every single fight in the first round. That just kind of t- – I mean, that's telling of the way he fought this fight. I mean, he seems to be a guy that goes forward and gives no shits and comes at you. And if he puts you if he puts you down, he's going to get on top of you. He's going to maul your ass. Um, certainly. Dude, of course this guy this guy is straight out of Tennessee. That's no surprise. This guy is straight from the south. <laughs> give, giver of no fucks was he in this fight. He has seven knockouts or TKOs, two submissions, and that's it. Yeah, he's just – I, I can't wait to, to see what happens. Out. This that it, it, it's honestly funny because for me, it's it's become a thing now where I, I'm more excited for this light heavyweight tournament. Like there was there was a thing about it where I wasn't excited to or I wasn't too amped to see Tiago and Hamill fight again, but um, but this new spin on it with Holden Holder coming in and and beating Silva and advancing, it actually makes it it actually gives it a uh, like more of a different taste that I that I actually enjoy. Like I'm actually excited to see who wins yeah, the next fight, who takes Holder on. I'm, I mean, th- this literally could not have worked out any better for Teddy. I mean, he's he he legit. Uh, he, he, his the stars aligned for him here because he's so lucky at this point to have this fight and um and now uh, could could potentially win a belt has probably brought more spark and flair to this tournament that th- than there was before. And so with that all being said. Uh, I can't wait to see how this this whole tournament plays out. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be exciting, and I can't wait. Um, what did, what were your thoughts on it, Jonas? What did you think of that fight? I don't know if we asked you. Uh, yeah, that fight was off the chain, man. Off the chain. Off the chain. Off the chain. You know, the- I think that uh, well, I think World Series in, in general is just making a name for themselves just on that card alone. They, that was just great stuff. <laughs> 
let's let's talk about that oh, main event. You. Let's just let's also talk about how great that main event was. That was wow. Justin and I was saying it. Luis Palomino, I told you guys, that guy, no joke. Comes in there, he's so exciting. He's uh he's also one of those guys that just really, you know, puts on an exciting performance every time out. And uh and man, those guys beyond delivered. That was one of the greatest fights of this year. That's fight of the year candidate thus far for me. I don't know about you, but what did you think? Chris. Oh uh, me, oh, okay. I wasn't sure who you're talking to. But yeah. um yeah, I mean they just well by now they, I mean Justin Gaethje, I wasn't the biggest fan of his going in there. I thought he would get too sloppy at times, he would definitely get caught, but he puts on some fun fights and this is one of them. I've definitely become more of a fan of his. He came out there and just went to town, especially in that first round and even later on too. The only problem is that he definitely gets sloppy at times, leaves his chin out there, and gets caught with too many punches at times. And if he gets caught with the right punch, he could definitely go out, and I wouldn't be surprised by it. But if he tightens up his defense, this guy could be a top guy in the world at lightweight. And I'm talking about, like, can compete with UF, like top five UFC guys because he has all the skills. He has a good striking offense. He has good wrestling. It's just that his defense leaves him susceptible to a lot of strikes. But um, he looked really good. He just came out there, fired at will, and was able to get takedowns. He did some weird-ass takedown from a rear naked choke set up, and it was funny to watch that. And then uh, Palmino landed some good strikes, too. He had um, Gaethje a little bit rocked at points, but he nothing too serious, and Gaethje dropped him a few times. And then um, those leg kicks at the end that would really finish that fight, they were some really heavy leg kicks that dropped uh, Palmino at one point and then dropped him again with it and just kind of walked off and didn't even really want to finish it and just went after him, finished the fight. And I, I mean, Gaethje's looking better and better every time. If he tightens up that defense, I would not be surprised if he eventually would get signed by the UFC and could do some big things there. He could, man. I mean, and he's what? Really could. He, he, um, and he's 26. He's still got all the time in the world to really, uh, really, um, Really do big things Show in the up, promotion. Yeah. And, man, the World Series of Fighting really got the hookup when it came to him. He's one of these fighters that really start. I think I believe he made his debut at the World Series of Fighting number two, like their second ever event. Um, and uh, check that for me. I could be wrong. Maybe it was World Series of Fighting three, but I'm, I, I don't know which one it was. But he's uh, he's been there since near the beginning. And, uh, and this was one of those things that we talked about, Jonas, where – these there there there's these certain fighters that just have have it have something special and that and that promotion yeah, the promotion needs to realize and and market that and they certainly can now I mean Gaethje is still undefeated what he's fourteen and zero now um and uh, I believe only has one decision under the entire banner of World Series of Fighting barely has any decisions in his career in general um he's so fun to watch he's a fun personality he's young. And uh, I believe, you know, each time that uh, Justin comes out and fights, I believe it's going to be one of their best events. Yeah, I mean, I, I just got all the stats on Gagey right here. I'm on his shirt dog page. He has, he debuted at World Series of Fighting 2, also for uh -huh. World Series of Fighting 3. Oh, he fought at both he's, of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he's, um, he's obviously undefeated 14 No, He has two decisions, 11 knockouts, and one submission. God, see, man. I mean, it, it's really a, it's really one of those rare cases where you get a guy as exciting as Gaethje that could just dominate guys. And you're right. And man, if he could just, and you're right, if he could, he, th there are times when he's in there, he doesn't necessarily need to take as much punishment as he's taking in there. When he's as aggressive as it is, if, if yeah, if he tightened up his boxing or just his movement in general and his footwork, he he would be, you know, even more dangerous than he already is. Fourteen and zero. Dude, if he could keep his geez. chin tucked and keep his hands up, yeah. he'd be more dangerous than he already is. Well, I mean, it's also a matter of 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 uh, of um, what is it? What's the word? Uh, you know, highlighting his striking in the sense that you know it could really improve his counter striking, and he would already. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. There's certain things he could definitely improve, but I'm just talking like. What does he train? If he did, if he did two basic things. Oh wow. It would elevate his game a lot. Yeah, he trains yeah. at the uh, Grudge it's Training it's Center. I just realized. Um, because I was just asking myself, where does he train? I wonder who he's training under. And he uh, trains at the Grudge Training Center. Not a bad spot uh, to train at. And that actually makes sense why Brendan Schaub is always talking about him now. Because he trains with him, which I didn't know before. Um, 
yeah, big things coming up for Gaethje. And, and again, that was, for me, a fight of the year uh, candidate. Jonas, what did you think of that fight in general? Well, that fight was great. Oh, yes. Again, you know, we talked about it earlier, but, um, you know, that fight got really, really, really crazy in the very early. I think they both expended a whole bunch of energy early on. So if that fight didn't end when it did, it could have got real sloppy. So I'm glad it ended when it did, personally. You know, not to say those guys are bad fighters, but that could have very easily been a, a fight that got sloppy and it would have ruined the world. You know, started off as a great fight. Nobody wants to see that happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, it would have been uh, – it's interesting, though, because it could also be 50-50. If that did happen, then who knows if if maybe both of these guys decide to get their hunt Bigfoot on, you know, and then just show nothing but heart and keep throwing leather. But – um. Gaethje being the guy that he is, of course, found that opening, took advantage, got the finish, and uh, it's really looking um, like Gaethje will probably be running that division for a while moving forward um, uh, under at the World Series of Fighting. Yeah, Gaethje, Gaethje is – I think Gaethje's special. I think he's really, really good. Yeah, I've been Gaethje saying that. After the Nick Newell fight, I was sold on him because – he didn't buy up into any of that hype. He fought him like he was the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Like he thought that the guy he was fighting was the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, and he wanted to shut that shit down. After the Newell fight, I was sold on him. And then, you know, uh, going into the Gallard fight, he looked great. Um, and then, uh, now, of course, this Palomino fight. Man, this is going to be one of those fights that we're going to be talking about for a while. I think, personally. It's a great weekend in MMA. There's another thing, too. I mean, not only for MMA fans, but for wrestling fans, um, as as a press time, this was today. But uh, for everybody listening right now, yesterday was uh, WrestleMania 31. And um, very, very, not surprisingly, but in, in some odd affair, Ronda Rousey actually got herself in the ring there with The Rock and Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Well, Jonas, I know you were watching. What did you think when that happened? Man, you know, they make a lot of money for a lot of good reasons. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, seeing Ronda in there didn't surprise me at all. Um, seeing The Rock in there, I, I really just wanted to see Rock and Triple H throw down one last time. Because as they said, that rivalry was great. That, that was one of my favorite rivalries. That's when I was really watching it uh, heavily. Uh, in my, you know, later teens, watching WWF, uh, seeing The Rock and seeing uh, Triple H and Kurt Angle and Stone Cold, you know, all that stuff was awesome. Um, and, you know, Ron is, you know, Ron is just another celebrity. You know, this is not the first time a, a pro wrestling promotion has used uh, celebrity to market their uh, product. So, hey, mm -hmm. I see nothing wrong with it as far as that goes. Yeah. They've used they've used combat fighters before. Hell, they even used Floyd May, uh, Mayweather in a WrestleMania event at one point. Remember that? When he he faced... the yeah. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I haven't I haven't really been a fan of wrestling since I was in like fifth, sixth grade, maybe like a hardcore fan. Like I used to be so into it, but I I kind of just grew out of it. But I mean, I did catch the. The mad, uh, the Ronda thing, and I thought it was pretty funny that she shade up judo through Triple H. That yeah, was pretty fun. I would have liked to have seen her throw yeah. Stephanie McMahon I mean, in an armbar. That would have been great. Yeah, want... but I don't, I don't think Stephanie wants to get judo thrown, so I think that's why. Nah, yeah, it. but I just you know it would have been cool if she threw like a flying armbar on that on that chick and just went, uh, you know, and then you see yeah, Stephanie. Ah! Cool. But yeah. I mean, yeah, it was cool. I mean, you get Ronda in there; she's obviously known as a big wrestling fan in general. And, I mean, it was just cool to get her in there and do something. Apparently, Nick was saying she had pretty good mic work and everything. So, why not? It's fun. Yeah. I thought, I mean, because for it me, good. it wasn't like she, she was sounding like thing. anything other than herself. You know what I mean? <laughs> she only said one thing. Yeah. I mean, she just said, you know, come in here and make me. Dude, I mean, as long yeah. as it wasn't corny. No, it wasn't. She didn't okay. sound like anything other than herself. So... But yeah, so I would be I just want to complain about it because a lot of people get in there and they're Well as long as it's not corny, just take it take it as it is. <laughs> what did Jonas say? Jonas, what did you say? I'm just saying I don't know where the whole thing about her uh, having 
the nice mic work comes from, she only said one thing. Yeah, she said a, what? Like, she said yeah, like two things. So, she said two things. One thing before Steph said, and then she said the uh, what was it? Get out of my ring. She's like, make me. Well. Yeah. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah, that's two things. You're saying she said one thing. You two. fibber. <laughs> but yeah. That's true. Okay. You think we'll see her in there again? In the in. You think like you think the WWE might be interested in having her get back in there like they did with Tyson or like they did with Floyd. Eh. <laughs> eh. Unless, they, unless they're talking about doing a trip and stuff versus Rock and Ronda, I don't see that happening. That might be an episode of who wouldn't who wouldn't like to see the Rock get back in there? You know. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's always fun. Yeah, and that's the thing. Pro wrestling and MMA have always somewhat coincided. A lot of things that uh, MMA. Used, uh, you know, drew back in the day, drew, uh, drew in an entertainment value was from pro wrestling. So, yeah, yeah. back in like five days of uh, MMA. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Ronda was back in the ring, possibly. But I, I wouldn't expect anything out of it just yet. Yeah, I was going. Um, what was it? Nah, who knows? I, 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 I wouldn't mind seeing her back go back in there, but you know, with as busy as Ronda is, who knows? Probably not. But I mean, very fun like WrestleMania for anybody movies, that watched. She's fighting. Don't have a lot of time for other. What's up? Other things. I mean, she's doing so many movies. She's fighting. She yeah. probably doesn't have a lot of time for putting other things on her plate. Probably not. Um, with that being said, we're about an hour in. I know Chris, you want to get out of here. Um. I'll stay on for the rest of it. I don't mind. All right. Well, I it's another thing that it's one thirty in the morning my time. But, yeah. uh, we'll keep going. What do you uh? You want to answer some questions, or did you have anything in mind that you wanted to discuss? No, I think uh, whatever you want to do, we can answer some fan questions. Jonas, so what about whatever, you? Huh? Did cool. you have anything you wanted to bring into the into the center here? What's about uh, it? No, nah, I was asking Jonas if he had anything you wanted to bring to mind before. Oh, okay, yeah, go for it. Shoot. If he did, I don't know if he does. If he oh, doesn't, right. then we'll just go to fan questions. Yeah, if we can go to fan questions. I don't have anything right now. All right. One from uh, at James Wright on Twitter. He asked this, <clears throat> seeing as uh, – <laughs> oh, God, this is a weird question. He didn't even spell it right considering he had only 140 characters. I'll try and read this as best I can. How do you see the welterweight division a year from now? He's spelling it with like digits and stuff. It's really annoying. How do you see the welterweight division in the UFC a year from now? Uh, who do you see as champion? Hmm. Well, welterweight has gotten so exciting these days, and uh, I for one enjoy it. I think it's great. Um, you you certainly got your your high value guys in in, in Robbie Lawler, Rory Hendricks, Matt Brown. I don't think we'll see Matt Brown there ever after the Hendricks lost. Losing two in a row, he's got a slump he's got to work on uh, getting back from. Condit's kind of on the same boat, coming back from injuries, uh, coming back from a, a, another slump himself. Has only won, like, uh, what, one in his last four. Going to fight Tiago Alves. There's a lot of interesting fights, though, at, at welterweight in general. There's a lot of exciting fighters, like Brandon Thatch, Stephen Thompson. Uh, Henderson's in the fold now. Tyron Woodley uh, is another one of those guys near the top. Um, Eric Silva, you never know when that guy could decide to get on a streak. Who knows? Um, hmm. A year from now. That's hard to think. Uh, I would think, okay, so Hendricks gets the next title shot. What comes after that? Who do you, who do you, who, who do you, would you see being there in a year from now? Hmm. I don't know. That, it's such a, it's so... For a year, I would I can only think about them six months from now because that division is so I wouldn't say clogged. It's actually really stacked, but it's just like you you don't know who gets where. It depends on the fights that need to be made. Um, Jonas, what do you think? Yeah, Walter Wait, it's one of those uh, it's one of those situations where you've got a whole bunch of great fighters that can all take it at this stage. There's nobody truly uh, far and away above and beyond any of the other fighters. So, you know, a year from now, who knows? Who knows who gets it? I'm with you, man. I mean, it, it could be anybody yeah. at this thing. I mean, not, not anybody, but I'd say it could be any of, you know, the top five at this stage. 
It certainly there's, could. There's not one clear runaway um, front runner guy right now. There's, I mean, there there are favorites in a specific matchup, but there's not one guy that I say beats everybody at yeah. this stage. Plus, you want to know what this new t- this title fight coming up, Robbie and Rory. It it could yeah. it, it could I mean it's not like that's an easy fight to call. That's gonna be a great fight because really yeah. I think it could be split down the middle who sees who winning. Rory since that loss to Robbie has has been on such a tear, and of course Robbie has too. I mean he he fought Hendricks twice and won the, or not twice he fought Hendricks twice, beat Matt Brown, beat Ellenberger, has gone like they've both gone on their own separate tears, and it's actually very surprising that Robbie's the underdog. Um, Going into a fight with a guy where he's the champ and it's against the guy he beat, it's really odd that the you know odds makers had him winning or had have him losing. Um, but you know it it is a very close to call fight. Rory is is uh, is, is still a young I believe he's what twenty four twenty five still so young but still looking like a badass each time he gets in there. Now he I mean the only the only bad performance I think he's ever had was actually in his loss, or not in his victory against Ellenberger because he didn't do too much, but he still got the win. It was a weird fight, but uh, I believe that in a five-round fight, that changes things too. Um, Robbie's been in five-round fights three times now. Rory, I believe, has never gone five rounds. Um, I think that makes a big difference. I think that, that, that helps Robbie in the long run. Um, and so with that, I think Robbie wins that fight. It really is telling how stacked the division is when you got a champion, you don't know how long he'll stay that way. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, I got to agree with both of you guys because, uh, in this division, especially it's all about matchups. It's taken some hits recently. We have Condit who's been, he's up there and he could definitely beat any of these guys at some point aside from me. It could, it's just about the matchups, but mm-hmm. Condit has been out for a long time due to Injury. We have Hector Lombard who popped positive, and he's going to be on the shelf. And then we have um, mm-hmm. what's his face? Uh, Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, got pulled out. He's been missing weight so many times, and he has to pop back up to middleweight. I could see him in a year from now. He'll probably be back at the welterweight or even less. That's than his that. goal. He but, said he wants to go to middleweight, fight once or twice, no more than twice, and would like to ask for another shot at, at fighting at welterweight, kind of like yeah, Henry no, Cejudo. I think he'll definitely be back at welterweight. To win it in a year's time, but um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, my looks good, but I mean, I don't know if he can beat a lot of the guys above him. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really it's just interesting to see because I mean, if uh, obviously as you're saying, Robbie being a five round fight, it helps him, and I think as we get closer to the fight, Robbie might become the favorite. But um, at this point, I'm not quite sure. But um, Rory, I could see either one of those guys winning that fight. To be honest, it just um, I think Rory's going to be very prepared. For a five round fight, I won't be surprised that if he looks even if he looks just as good as Robbie does in the later rounds, just because he comes well prepared for all of his fights. Um, we there's just no GSP in this division right now. There's no guy who can, as Jonas said, can beat everyone. And um, I could see Rory beating Robbie, but then I can see maybe Hendricks being able to beat Rory. So I mean, I'm not sure. I could definitely if Rory's able to beat Robbie Lawler and Johnny Hendricks. After that, if he has to fight him next, I could see Rory staying at, as the champion for a while because there's, other than that, there's probably not a lot of guys who beat him in the division. We saw what he did against Tyron Woodley, which was really impressive. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know who will be champion in the year. I'm going to i go out on a limb and say Rory McDonald if he's able to beat Robbie Waller, but it could be any of those top guys. Last thing, too, being – oh, well, actually, also, it, it, since that fight is three – a little over three months out, I would actually like to see Hendricks versus Woodley uh, fight for number one contendership of that belt um, for the – for the to fight the winner of that event. I think that that's probably the best uh, way to go. Um, considering yeah, the only that, thing is, is you get into a little bit of a sticky situation there that you have the same guys fighting each other because if – I mean, if Robbie fights Woodley – that's a good fight to that's a good fight to have if that one yeah but you on the risk also of uh Hendricks winning and Robbie winning but who but I think people would want to see that trilogy fight um but you know you, you never know how uh, how in a uh, how like uh by the end of this year how that rematch could look i mean this fight was what the Robbie Rory fight was what about a year and a half ago 
or probably two years ago now, actually, almost two years ago. Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of the thing is all these these guys who have now made it to the top have, have somewhat near fought one another already. I mean, Matt Brown's fought in Hendricks and Robbie, and Robbie's fought Rory and Hendricks, and Woodley's fought and uh, has fought, uh, you know, Rory, and, you know, it's just all back and forth. And so, you know, it, it depends. And, and it's, it'd be very interesting to see which up-and-comers make it there in a year. Um, one of the one of the yeah. fighters I'm most excited about um, – that I love on uh, that's in the up and coming prospect uh, title right now is Stephen Thompson. Uh, I would let. Uh, yeah, I mean he's yeah, yeah. he's on a what five four or five fight winning streak right now, and um, you know he he seems like one of these guys. His that, last loss was to Matt Brown. His only loss was to Matt Brown, and and even in that fight, while Matt Brown certainly won that, it was no question about it. He showed how tough he can be in in getting in gritty fights with guys. And there's none grittier than Matt Brown, so um, I, I would I would love to see Stephen Thompson at least in the top ten in a year's time. That for me as a fan, that's what I would want to see. Um, I couldn't I couldn't pick a better guy, honestly. That was great. Yeah, Stephen Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, he's just he's the guy. Fight I want to see, honestly, uh, Stephen Thompson and Brandon Thatch. That wets my whistle. <laughs> that would be a good fight to watch, or even if you threw Jordan Mean in the mix, or even if you threw Jordan Mean in the mix there, I you know that's another guy, you know. Yeah, yeah he's not bad. Mm -hmm. He's not bad at all. Yeah, no, there's definitely there's definitely some guys to go in there. I mean, uh, there's Wonder Boy, there's Thatch, there's me, and and we can also see if Benson Henderson winds up staying at seventy. You want to know what's funny? Is he actually called too, out, uh, though, and he also called out uh, Woodley. Recently, yeah, though, on Twitter. <laughs> The best matchup for him, I think. Yeah, I mean, if he gets that fight and wins it, puts him straight up the rankings. He'll be in probably the top five just by winning that fight. So there's a lot of interesting things that could happen. I mean, it just it you're playing devil's advocate with that um Woodley Hendricks matchup just in case because you can have Woodley fighting if Woodley winds up fighting uh R Rory again after he just whooped him. Yeah. And then you can have Hendricks wind up fighting Lawler again. So uh, that's the only negative thing that really comes out of that. But aside from that, it's a really interesting division, and I can't wait to see where it's going to be in a year. Yeah. Let's move on to the next question. Next question. Um, from at <laughs> from at Charlie Sheen PCO. What? Charlie Sheen. <laughs> what? Okay. Who do you uh, – who would you say fights next for the light heavyweight title after Johnson and Jones? Who do you have for Johnson and Jones? Nick is not allowed to answer. <laughs> well, obviously this person listens. Um, well, who would be next for Johnson and Jones? Being that Johnson has put Alex out of, of contention, I would feel, after beating him. Uh, Wait, what? Uh, what's the question? I couldn't he asked the question was who do who do we see fighting next for the title after Johnson Jones, and who do you see winning between Johnson and Jones? And he ended it with Nick is not allowed to answer, which means he already knows what my answer would be. All right, so I guess just answer that first part then. Well, for me, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Honestly, it's not like there's a clear cut guy on the top of my head um, for Johnson Jones. Obviously, I believe Johnson wins that fight. But, um, I mean, I would think maybe they'd give Jones the rematch, maybe. Um, depends on how that fight ends. But uh, if if between uh, – besides those two, it would be really interesting because, I, I you know, John Johnson really kind of threw Gustafson out of contention there. And uh, DC, while he's still up there, has, of course, lost to Jones, though I can see if he wins one or two, gets a shot at Johnson. Um if if it is Johnson, if it's if Jones wins, then then they wouldn't give it to him. I'd have to look at the rankings here. Jonas, what do you think? Um, who's after uh, the title fight? After well, first, who do you Jones? think wins between Jones and uh, Johnson and Jones, and then uh, and then go ahead and answer that. Who wins between Johnson and Jones? Yeah. Um. Wow. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's uh, you're gonna hate me, Nick, but it, it's still too hard for me to pick against. Ah! It really is. Ah! 
too hard for me to pick against John Jones in that fight. It really is, man. I mean, I know Johnson has damn near the best chance anybody's ever had against John Jones. Mm-hmm. Just with the way with, with what he brings. But John Jones just finds ways to win better than anybody. Mm-hmm. Especially at 205. Yeah. So, dude, I don't know, man. John Jones is a winner, and that's that's just the truth about it. Yeah, we're 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 not talking for a while, Chris. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you're not gonna like me so much either, but I'm gonna have to agree with Jones on that one. I'm gonna say John. Right. Jones. I'm glad I'm glad we're getting this on record. Well, I could see, I could see Anthony Johnson winning that fight, but I think John yeah. Jones is just you can't pick against the guy because he. I can I can do it all day. To all the fights he's in, he winds up finding the guy's weakness. Yeah, he just he finds where these guys are weakest. He finds, I mean, he just finds any intricate detail where he can beat someone, and then he beats them at that. And he'll even beat them at their own game. So I mean, he could do what a lot, basically, no one else can do, and just beats everyone basically everywhere, wherever he wants to, wherever he feels like they're weakest, even where they're strongest against some of these guys. So you never know what he's gonna do. You never know his game plan going into a fight, but he always seems to come out on top and unscathed so most of the time. So I gotta say, John Jones is gonna win. And as for the next shot, it's really hard to call. I would like to see Jones if he wins this one. There, he basically cleaned out most of the division. So I would like to see him go up and maybe fight Kane or whoever wins that fight between Kane and Wardoom. But um, if he had to defend his title again, um. If Ryan Bader beats Daniel Cormier, which I doubt, but you can give him Bader if he wins that fight. And I don't know, uh, I don't know who else. I can't really see anyone else getting a fight right after the next win. I mean, I don't know if Rashad Evans has a fight, but that's all I could see. That's all I, I really Rashad don't has a uh, an ACL injury, um, so he's out for. If OSP, did, if OSA Pro didn't blow it against Bader, that would have been your. Uh, that would have been your guy. You yeah. can put it together a couple more wins, but yeah, Bader's won he, now. He, he four reached in a, a row. wall. I think he's reached a wall. So we can't give it to OSP right now. Nah. Plus, and and the reason Bader does make sense is because he's won four in a row. If he does beat DC, which you know that'd be that yeah. that would certainly be a top of the mountain kind of win. Um, Cormier having fought for the belt, uh, having only yeah. lost to John Jones, that would certainly be uh, a fight worthy enough to give him a title fight, yeah, especially with how. Streak. Yeah, Bader ended OSP streak. He beat Phil Davis, um, and he yeah. would have beaten. Uh, he would have beaten DC if he wins that one. So, yeah, yeah, so those are yeah three. Those are those are yeah. Those, so. That's a that's a that's a pretty nice resume going into a title fight. Absolutely. So. So certainly, uh, he, he, he's certainly there. And I, I guess I would have to agree. Um, not with your picks in the title fight, but, you know, can't pick against <laughs> can't pick against Jones. I can. I can pick against him all day. I can, watch me. <laughs> I've, explained, I've explained left and right how, uh, how I know that, or how I feel Johnson can win that fight. So I don't feel like I, I don't need to get into all that again. Um, but yeah, I would feel if Bader beats DC. But right, what if Nick, he, do what if he doesn't beat DC? That's the question, though. Like they would be in real trouble then. Honestly, I mean, maybe they would just give Gustafson a, a tune-up and then give him the fight. I don't know. I mean, yeah. if 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 uh, if Jones wins, I don't think it'd be as enticing if Johnson wins because he got knocked down in the first round by him. Yeah, I mean, I would just like to see him go up to heavyweight and maybe pursue some fights there, or even just fight straight up, fight at the uh, with Kane or with Doom. I'd like to see him fight a couple contenders first, but uh, yeah, you're right. If he did fight for the title, how big of a fight that would be! Oh, I mean, um, the only reason it would be good to see him fight contenders is if he plans on staying at heavyweight. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not. A, well, I don't think he would just drop the title. I think he would do what Silva did and go up there and fight once or twice every few, uh, in between every few uh, title defenses if, he, if he's able to beat Johnson. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. I mean, yeah, if he de- just, I, would. I mean, if he just went up there and had the one super fight, I wouldn't mind that either. But he doesn't really have anyone in this division to fight unless Beta wins that fight. Yeah, that's the thing. That's you know, he's like. He's got the same issue Aldo somewhat has is that he's beaten so many guys in his division. Um, 
Yeah, definitely. That was a good question. Uh, last question. Oh, crap, I deleted it. Any no. other fan questions? Yeah, there was one, but I accidentally moved it. Hold on. It's loading. Uh, if it would just come up. This will, be, this will probably be the last one here. <sighs> what do you think of the... Oh. Hmm. Never mind. That's kind of the similar question as we got asked, so I'll go on to one of our previous ones that we never answered. Hold on. One sec. All right. I feel like we've asked, asked or answered this one before. Okay. Who do you see from Bellator or World Series of Fighting that could go into the UFC and become a credible threat to the title? Um, that question's definitely been asked. It has it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like it has. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I would say Gaethje for lightweight and um, maybe uh, Paul Daly for welterweight. Maybe. I mean, that's very maybe-ish. But, uh, so Gaethje from the World Series yeah. and Daly for uh, Walter? Yeah, well, actually, I, also, I, I would actually like if Jessica Aguilar just stopped playing silly and came to the, the UFC and... Uh, and uh, and get and tried her hand uh, in in the strawweight yeah. division. That would actually that would actually be the most interesting person to who to switch from a division as a champion and and fight for the title immediately off the bat. Because Jessica Aguilar is is always crediting herself as one of the best, if not the best, one one fifteen uh, pound fighter in the world. And uh, and strawweight uh, certainly could use a name like her to come in and and. Uh, and fight for the belt immediately, especially her being, in my opinion, a better grappler than Carla, and uh, and actually can hold her own in the stand-up. So uh, against Young Jacek, that would be a really nice matchup to watch. And then, uh, yeah, for uh, I think Gaethje could really uh, give give him like one or two years, and then put him in the UFC. Oh, you yeah. know that'd be that'd be a scary, credible dude who could easily work his way to a title fight. I'm telling you. Um, Against Khabib though, or even Pettis maybe. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. I know you're really high on on Khabib, and and that's the funny thing about the lightweight division is right now, it's it's champion is uh is uh is certainly had 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 a nice uh, victory in his win, but now may possibly face a guy who beat him just about a year ago. Um, and so. It, 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 uh, lightweight's very interesting right now. and could definitely use a guy like Gaethje coming in because after Khabib, who would be after if if and this is this is assuming he beats Donald Cerrone, in which I, I actually would like to see Cerrone win. But um, even no matter who who wins that one, who who would be after Khabib or Cerrone? You know, like who would be after that? Any any ideas? Could make the argument for Edson Barboza if he gets it together. Uh, who did? Nah, Edson Barboza just lost to Michael Johnson. He lost one. Yeah, he did lose Michael Johnson. Yeah, that was early yeah. in the year. And uh, getting <laughs> interesting. Where's uh? Yeah, Miles Jury just lost to Cerrone. Maybe Johnson, depending on who he, he can, uh, depending on his next few victories, he should yeah. really he should really get busy and, and and win some more fights, and then his name could be in there. I know he's ranked. I think he's like number ten right now. Um. Or probably higher, because I believe when he beat Edson, Edson was like 6 or 7, and he was 12. Yeah. Yeah, he could be higher. That's certainly a name that could go in there. And uh, I can't think of anybody else from Bellator that could go in uh, into the uh, – into the division uh, of the UFC and, and, make any, and make any noise other than maybe Paul Daly. Chris? Uh, well, Jonas, go ahead. I don't know. Uh, well, I'd let Jonas answer. I'd say Liam McGeary would be a great uh, pickup for the UFC. Yeah, um, certainly. But Bellator needs to right hand as long as they can. Oh, definitely. You know? Yeah, this yeah, is a hypothetical. Bellator, Bellator needs him a lot more than the UFC does, so. Oh, of course. Bellator needs right. everybody that they have more than the UFC does, so. You know. Um, I mean, the only reason they would ever give anybody up, as well as World Series of Fighting, is money, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's the same reason to keep these guys. They long term can make them a lot of money, depending on you know how they how they market their careers. You know, um, and we've talked about it before how un they're they're unfortunate in not promoting certain fighters or certain champions. Like Will Brooks is probably the best example, um, 
where they, they really need to get on that, especially for a guy as as uh, as fun to watch as Will Brooks is, you know, um, especially in one of their most exciting divisions, which is lightweight. Um, that being said, that's uh, that's all I got. I would have to get more questions somewhere else, which uh, I don't want to do. So I think we could close this one out. That's uh, we've had. Wait, wait, I've been. I didn't answer that question. Well, I couldn't hear what you were saying. Oh well. What I mean, well, did you answer the question? Well, the question was, who do you see coming from Bellator World Series of Fighting that could uh, make a credible threat to a title in the UFC? I mean, there's a few guys. I mean, there's uh, Justin Gage you were talking about earlier. You were saying Liam McGarry. Most of the guys you named, it's really that it's not like too many of them out there, but there are fighters that probably aren't going to be leaving their organization anytime soon, and I'm what you guys were saying about lightweight in the UFC, I mean, aside from Michael Johnson, there aren't too many contenders, but if Tony Ferguson gets a big-name fight and he winds up winning that, he's a dark horse contender. Oh, yeah. Uh, the I totally of, forgot about him. I, the winner of uh, I can't do Masvidal, if one of those guys can get a big fight after that, they could step up. I mean, we still got a while left, left until the Cerrone could be winner fights those on you, so... If we have some time there where we could see one of those guys or even both of those guys step up to higher ranks in the division. Certainly. Yeah. Gilbert and uh, Gilbert Melendez, Eddie Alvarez fighting next. Alvarez, if he wins, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a short road to a title. Um, yeah, Michael, jo Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael Johnson is ranked uh, number six. Surprisingly, Benson is still ranked at lightweight, but I guess uh, they're they're kind of holding the door for him, maybe thinking he might come back to lightweight. So, yeah. Uh, who knows what could happen there. And Tony Ferguson's at number 13, but having won five straight, I think if he wins like one or two more, he's right there. You're right. Um, and that's another exciting guy to watch. I wonder who he gets next. I, w I would actually uh, think maybe he gets a, a main card slot at 188 maybe in Mexico. We'll see. Um, that being said, I feel like it's uh, maybe we can close out on that note right there. Um, good podcast. I liked it. It's uh, uh, We always enjoy having you on, Jonas. You're the man. Chris, thanks for helping. I actually want to, uh, again, uh, say. Yeah, uh, Jonas, thanks again for coming on, man. Yes. Absolutely, man. Certainly. Yeah, absolutely. We, anybody else that uh, we've been um, trying to get a hold of certain fighters, such as Ryan Couture, Francis Karma, a lot of other guys, we uh, would uh, certainly enjoy having you on. Um, moving forward, I can't wait. Hopefully, we can get that done. Um, again, people, for anybody that wants to get us on the go, the MMA Discussion Podcast is available on iTunes and Stitcher. Again, if you have storage uh, issues on your phone, maybe you got only 8 gigs and you only got a gig left. Definitely go with Stitcher. Stitcher's the way to go. The iTunes podcast thing will just take up all your storage without asking for permission. It's annoying. I know it. So just go with Stitcher. It's certainly the best way to go. Um, and, of course, if you really want to get uh, to tone in those abs, man, get that flex belt. If you want to know how it works, go on the uh, uh, check it out. Uh, of course, if you're trying to get the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gear, 10% off, promo code Sports of Anarchy 10 that's the way to go, man. I am actually investing in some myself. I gave it a gander the other day, and I'm certainly going to get me some stuff from there using our own hookup, and it actually works. So get it done. Um, episode 29, we're locking this shit down. Say goodbye, guys. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you guys again for listening. Um very soon, I know I've been promising for this a bit, we're going to try a test podcast, something small on Google Hangouts, try to get the video up, and uh, it's past 2 a.m. <laughs> time, so I'm ready to go to sleep. Go to sleep. Nobody cares. Right, we're out. <laughs> we're out. Later. <laughs>